The Static Podcast is brought to you by the Hester Group, a law office with a 12-year proven track record of success. Now listen, if you've been involved in a serious car accident, you have injuries, your car is a wreck, you need to contact them because they can get you paid today. 314-652-4321. That's 314-652-4321. Tell them Stacy Static sent you, but remember, the choice of an attorney is an important one and should not be based solely upon advertisement. Hey, welcome to the Static Podcast. I'm Stacey Static, and of course, it's Lil Homie Monday. You know, this is by far one of my favorite days on the Static Podcast because I get to talk to amazing, dynamic, young people. And today's guest, I'm super excited to know and to meet officially. His name is Jamal Green. He's worked, he's a dancer. He's worked with his idol, Nicki Minaj. And he has also worked with my fave, Rihanna, <laughs> we'll call her Rihanna today because that's what all of us call her anyway. But uh, welcome to the show, to uh, Jamal Green. Thank you so much for joining me via Skype. Hi, today. thank you for, thank you for having me. Most My definitely. pleasure. I know you're so handsome. So nice to meet you. <laughs> thank you. No, no, I make thank you blush. You. I make you blush. So first of all, congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thank so you. I, I just want to know how you even started this journey. When did you start dancing? Where did you start dancing? Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, there is a dance, uh, like a dance company or like organization that's in St. Louis called Coca. Yeah. That's out of um, out of the Delmar Loop. They actually still have it. They still have it up and it's still up and running and it's still doing great things. But I originally started there when I was um, six years old. And I started in like jazz and more classical things like ballet and tap and um Things like that. We didn't really have much hip hop. I feel like most of the hip hop I learned was just from being a kid around the streets. You know what I mean? Like right, right. just looking at music videos and picking up dancing like that. And then eventually, I um started to take it more serious after after high school. And uh, I moved to LA a few years ago, and then I'm here now. <laughs> so how did you yeah. know that you wanted to be a da- at six? Was this something your mama just said, you're going to take dance lessons? That's that's what you're going to do. I, or did you start to show I, like signs that that's what you wanted to do? I feel like that um, I was a very creative kid, so I was just kind of um, always, you know, into something. And then there was a, like, a teacher came to our school to give us just like an after-school program. And then I think she noticed me first. And told my mom, like, you know, something is a little bit different about him than, you know, most normal six-year-olds. So then they just kind of put me into dance. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I liked that. I was pretty good at it, so I just kept doing it. All right. So you moved out to L.A. a few years ago. So what's your journey been like there? So did it start off, did it happen immediately, or was there some, like, starving artist time in L.A. where you were waiting tables and had the classic L.A., I moved out to L.A. to be famous story? Um, for the most part, I, I pretty much had the classic, I moved out to LA to be famous story. <laughs> like I had to work at regular jobs. You know what I mean? I worked at Starbucks. I worked at Target, um, like Hertz rental car. I worked everywhere. You could name it. I worked there. You know what I mean? Just right. because I wanted to dance so bad that it was like, nothing was going to stop me from being able to live the life that I live now, you know? Right. So, um, I had to, you know, I went to the point where, you know, things things were picking up for me when I first moved to L.A., but not as, as fast as we all want them to be. You know what I mean? Right. But now that I'm at where I am now, I can honestly go back to a minute to just say, like, I wasn't ready. Or, you know, it wasn't my time for things to happen for me then. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. but because I'm a strong believer in everything happens for a reason. And especially to see that the way that life is now, you really can see that, you know, those things weren't meant for me. Exactly. at that time so what were some so, of the early disappointments let's get into that because i always think that there are lessons to be learned in, in in a person's journey right so when you say that you look back now and you're like i wasn't ready were you were your skills not where they were where they needed to be were you mentally not prepared to take on the challenges that you that you would have had to take on yeah i, I definitely would say skill um the professionalism and also just like mentally it's just certain things that you learn from experience and certain things that you learn from work that if I would have put myself into those situations three years, you know, versus what it is that I know now, I just know that I wouldn't have been ready for it. You know, like mentally, I wouldn't have been prepared to be able to handle how much it is that you need to handle to be in this position at this moment right now. So I just know that, you know, timing, timing means everything. Um, 
for instance, I've been to plenty of auditions before and, and gotten cut, you know, where I thought I was the best one in the room, but, you know, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I'm like, oh, I'm the best one, I'm a shoe and I know I'm gonna get this, you know, and then you still get cut, and it's, you know, that's hard, rejection is hard for anybody, but it was something that I had to face for a very, very long time, like, um, I've auditioned for the Grammys, I've auditioned for, you know, the, the Video Music Awards, BET Awards, all these different artists, and I've gotten mm -hmm. cut from them plenty of times, but, you know, fast forward, you know, years later, I, at some point, still get to work with them anyway, you know what I mean, but it's like, at that time, it was a huge disappointment, but where it is that I am now, being able to work with a lot of my favorite artists, it means more to me now because of the professionalism that I have now, the skill, you know, I'm mentally prepared to be able to be in these positions to work with, you know, the people that I look up to. So that's why I say it all happens for a reason. <laughs> Speaking to Jamal Green, who was the choreographer for the Fenty Fashion Show, which hits Amazon Prime this Friday. And I mean, you worked with Rihanna. We're going to get into that in a minute because your journey <laughs> actually started with Nicki Minaj. So tell me about that. Yes. Um, so I, I have been working with Nicki for, uh, for about maybe almost a year. Um, and then we we eventually end up going on tour together to be able to like, do the show. I remember I had um spoke with um I spoke with Kevin Johnson from St. Louis Post Dispatch, and he was a he, and at the time when we spoke about about the job, I wasn't even sure if I was going on tour. I'm just like you know I'm just waiting around for whatever happens if they ask me to come back. You know, right. I'll be back, and then fast forward, you know, the the tour ended up happening. But that also started with just from an audition for a music video, and um. I didn't really, I didn't really make it through at that time. Like I got cut from the audition, but then literally like two days later, that's when I got a phone call saying that she wanted to see me again. Then I went back and that's when I, I booked the first music video. And from then I just been with her since been so able to just do like a lot of even, great things. Initially you didn't even get on the music video, but she remembered you and they, and she wanted you. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then I got a call like two days later. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Not only did she want right. me, she saw me, she want me. Okay, Ooh, baby. I know. I mean, I know your head didn't explode, but you definitely that was like a that was a moment. Oh yeah, definitely. absolutely. That was definitely a step, a step for me. Yeah. That is awesome. Well, congratulations on that, and congratulations on the Fenty Fashion Show. How sexy is this going to be? Like, it sounds like it's going to be amazing. Yeah, no, it's going to be it's going to be pretty pretty amazing. Um, we were able to do a lot of great work and put together some amazing things. So it's like from top to bottom, I just feel like that almost every woman, you know, from little girls all the way up to grown women that watch this show will will be extremely excited about what it is that they see and also the different representation of each type of woman that's, you know, walking the face of the earth. You know what I mean? So I feel like that that in itself is going to be something super and powerful and just like great for for anybody to see, to be honest. It's going to be an amazing show. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I worked on it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, how, what, what was it like? Like how grueling was it? How long did you work on this project? When did you get the call? Like, how? Take me through the steps. This is so exciting. I'm so happy for you. Oh, thank you. So the way that it works was the hair choreographer on the job, Paris Goble, had worked with Rihanna prior to, and she did Rihanna's like Savage Fancy show last year. She choreographed the entire show. So this year, she was able to do more creative directing with the show. Like they pretty much gave her free reign to do whatever it is that she wanted to do. Nice. And um, so we were just like always kind of like just. And just as friends, just brainstorm ideas and just talk about different things. She would show me like different, you know, things she had in mind. And I would, you know, just give, you know, feedback here and there and not really thinking much of it. And um, then she eventually asked me what I like to, you know, help her assist on doing the choreography for the show. Nice. And even at the time, I was just like excited. I'm like, oh, yeah, like, you know, it'll be cool. You know, not really trying to like freak out and explode on, on the inside like I really wanted to. And um, then I eventually got, you know, got the call and I was told that we was going to New York City. We was in New York City for two weeks. So prior to that, the show had already been in the works for months, you know, and then we went to New York for two weeks to actually do like full dance rehearsals and work with all the different models and the different artists that are going to be a part of the show because she had to literally create the show from ground up. So wow. the, the position of each artist and, you know, the whole thing was all planned a, a certain type of way for it to run smoothly. I so it was great. It, it. <laughs> it took I, us I, two weeks, but yeah. it's worth it. 
I love it. Well, congratulations. I'm super excited Thank to you. see it. I love Rihanna. I love the fact that she's taking Fenty to the next level. She is just kicking ass of the competition, and she's representing all women of all shades, all shapes, all sizes, exactly. all colors. I love it. So we all feel included. Nobody has to be out of the loop, feeling sexy, and that's what it's all about. So what's next for you? So, um, right now I'm back in LA. I have about, um, a couple of weeks off before I have like a few, a few other things coming up soon, but I'm going to just try to find some time to go and visit, visit some of my friends from back home and, um, relax, <laughs> try to get relax. some sleep. <laughs> and of course you'll be Maybe watching... try to finally. Right. Go ahead. Yeah, watch it. Yeah, watch it. Fifty for sure. But um, yeah, I'll make sure. I'll try. I'll try to give me some sleep because I haven't. I haven't been able to even celebrate my birthday yet. So oh, wow. I'm gonna try to have some time to do a quick little vacation. <laughs> <laughs> so you you are coming home. You're coming home in the next few weeks, I guess. Yes. Yeah? Okay. All right. So who else? You want to give some shout outs? Who's who's? Because I see people all on the all on the timeline. They are, they out here speaking to you. Oh, I can. <laughs> wait, can I let me go in here and see? So I can. <laughs> yeah, people speaking. Hold on, wait. Yeah, Jamal. Hi, Jamal. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Congratulations, let me Jamal. See. I see Keisha Jackson, Brenda Hayes Taylor. So yeah, I mean, you know, that's just on mine. I don't know what's going on on your on your feed, but they definitely speaking on mine. And, um, I don't even think that they even let me see it, but, um, yeah, but, I know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I just want to say, I just want to say hi to, um, to everybody, all my friends and family in St. Louis and everybody that's been supportive of me, because honestly, it's just one of those things when you're not really in a city, you don't really know, I guess, like outside looking in what's really going on in the city and how much people really do you know, show support towards you until, you know, certain things happen and you really get to see it from a different perspective and it's great. Wow, <laughs> but, um, yeah. Well, continued success. I'm so excited for you. I mean, your your bio is really shaping up these days. You just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> you. Just keep on doing what you're doing. Thank you. Tell everybody where they can find you on social media, follow you on Instagram and all of that. Yes, my Instagram is um, Jamal. My name is Jamal DeAndre underscore. Um, and yeah, that's it. I don't have okay. Twitter or no, no Snapchat or nothing like that, but yeah, so follow me on Instagram. <laughs> All right, we will, we will do that. And are you, are you actually one of the dancers in the Fenty thing or you just did the behind the scenes stuff? Oh no, I just did a lot of the behind the scenes and worked with a lot of the artists. Well, okay. pretty much every artist that was on the show. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, we'll be checking out your work on Friday and we so appreciate you for checking in with us here at the Static Podcast. So thank you of so course. much. It, and happy thank you birthday. For having me. You, your birthday just thank you. Okay. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was, yeah, yeah, a while ago. Right. <laughs> thank well, you. <laughs> You've been thank you. It's been a whirlwind. It. All right. Right, exactly. All right. <laughs> well, continue success. Thanks again for joining us. Of course, thank you for having me. All right. Have you a good what? day. You too. That was Jamal Green. You can check out his work this Friday on the Fenty Fashion Show, which hits Amazon Prime on Friday. And uh, he was one of the choreographers and super excited for that young man because, you know, the little homies from St. Louis, they be getting it in. And I love the stories. That is the Static Podcast today. Shout out to my sponsor over there at Shades Donut Shop, 1015 North Grand. Make sure you go and holler at my guy Sterling. He doing his thing. Got the donuts cracking. And, of course, you can get a good tasty hamburger. They got sandwiches and fish and all of that good stuff and chicken. You make sure you stop by and get yourself some lunch and a delicious donut to boot. It's right there by Veterans Hospital. All right. Until next time, tomorrow, I'll have the authors of the Refactor. Chris Hill and Andre Walker will be joining me. They've got a book called The Refactor, Recharge, Refuel, and Rebrand, and they're going to talk about their journey and how they wrote the book and who they're targeting. So until next time, have a great Monday. Holla. <laughs>